Hello. Uh, hopefully you can see me. Um, okay, we're going to talk about math formulas using LaTeX syntax, and uh, a lot of the um, a lot of these, you know, the first time you use this on a document, um, you have to go to insert and then equation. Although for me, uh, I already did. I already did a kind of a minor equation character, and that was this right arrow. So you also see this on my on my toolbar. You also see this toolbar that says new equation. But just to pretend that uh, this is your first uh, this is your first uh, equation, we'll go to insert equation. That's just the other way of doing it. Now that new equation is grayed out, it's because we're already editing a, an equation. And uh, let's say that we have f at x, and we're going to use a, uh, we're going to show you a quadratic, just an example of a polynomial which just uses exponents. So x squared, and the way I got x squared, I got it using shift 6, that's the hat symbol. And the hat symbol is latex command for the next character being the exponent. And so then I type a 2. So here it's already, like, in, in, this, uh, in this editor, if I shift, if I do a shift 6, you don't see the hat symbol. Um, the editor automatically just sends your cursor up uh, to the um, above, uh, above right of the... Um, character that you want to make an exponent for or or a superscript of some kind and there's your x squared now to move out of that to get out of the exponent notice anything else I type in will be part of the exponent so I don't want that what I want to do is I want to hit the right arrow that gets me outside the exponent then I'll do the rest of my polynomial something like that okay um, another one is what about square roots so uh, there are ways of doing this using square, uh, like setting up an expression using square roots. Let's say that you have um, backslash sqrt. That's the LaTeX uh, command for square root. And usually that's followed by a curly brace. But in the editor, you just have to hit the space bar and you're already under the square root and I can put my x there and maybe even an exponent maybe make it the square root of x cubed um, now of course we can also do a fractional exponents if that's your preference so then x uh, can be to the exponent now you could write uh, fractions as 3 over 2 like that but if you want to use a LaTeX command they're a lot more stylish frac and then you hit the space bar and then you do three and then you hit the right arrow that sends you into the denominator of the fractional exponent and then you got three over two okay so there's your there's your three over two business so now uh, what about if you want a fraction for a whole um, a whole expression what if you want a rational function so Let's say that we have, for example, you begin with frac, you hit the space bar, you're in the numerator, and let's say you have x squared minus 2x plus 5. Okay, so there's, your, there's the top of your denominator. The bottom will be, I don't know, maybe 5x plus 2. Okay, and there's, there's another, there, there's a rational function for you there. And uh, you can actually set the domain there, of course, comma. Um, if you want to specify what values of x work, uh, x won't work for negative uh, two-fifths. So um, x, now to belong to the set of reals, it's backslash in space. And reals, but I believe uh, what's worked for me is just backslash capital R lowercase e and then space and then x not equal to so it's backslash n e space and we want uh, we want two fifths right so frac two over 
five and then close the curly brace. So there you go. There's a there's a function with its domain fairly well described. I forgot something. The such that is simply just shift and the vertical bar. It's there's no special command for that. Um, so okay, what about what about trig? Well, you can do you can do this for all six trig functions, right? Sign. Oh, sorry, I'm not I'm not in the editor. Let's get in the editor. So new equation, backslash sign, and let's say that we want um, we want sine squared. So sine squared, sine squared of x, and maybe we want to add it to cos squared of x. Now notice when I did backslash cos. I had to hit the space bar and then I did caret sign 2 to make it cos squared and notice how the editor just figures out the spacing. It works out quite well. So you have sine squared x plus cos, cos squared x and of course we know what that is. It's 1. Another one is um, of course while, while we're on the topic of trig um, you probably know you probably uh, would like to know how Greek letters are done because by convention uh, if I'm doing trigonometric identities I often fall back to using Greek letters for my angles so uh, you can do backslash alpha in fact I believe you can do any lowercase Greek letter backslash beta uh, backslash what's after what's after beta gamma um, what's after that? Delta. Okay. Um, okay, that's that's way beyond grade 12, but you get the idea. You can actually do Greek letters using backslash and then spell out the name of the Greek letter. Um, it doesn't quite work so well for uppercase Greek letters, like uppercase sigma. You can do lowercase sigma plus uh, lowercase sigma is just... Notice, notice how all the lowercase Greek letters have backslash, you spell out the name, and the first letter of that name is lowercase. And that's how you get a lowercase Greek letter. But what if you wanted uppercase sigma? So uh, the problem with uppercase sigma, here we go, we begin with a capital S, and you spell it out. Uh, notice that there, now the, um, the editor, the formula editor, doesn't provide a way for you to manually put something above that, below that, and in front of it, and behind it. Um, well, you can put stuff behind it, I'm sure, like th 2 multiplied by x minus 1. I don't know if you want to if you want to do that. But um, obviously, uh, one thing I can't do is uh, tell you the upper and lower limits of sigma uh, without making this notation very, very confusing and really not all that correct or not all that graceful. But as you can see, if you have another reason for using the letter sigma, uh, fine. Uh, of course, there's other ones. So you have um, in the editor sigma. Uh, of course, you have others like omega. Omega is there. Um, that's uppercase omega. Of course, there's lowercase omega. Um, there's, um, of course, uppercase pi, and of course there's lowercase pi. Um, so there's, there's a whole host of uppercase and lowercase characters that you can use in, in the LaTeX editor. Um, um, plus or minus. Now plus or minus will be given using backslash pm, right? Plus or minus is backslash pm, and then for ac, now ac. Uh, oh, hold on. Negative b. I shouldn't have squared that. If we're going to do this quadratic formula, I'm getting a little carried away here. But I think I meant to do b squared minus 4ac. And of course, the rest of it is over 2a. Now, if you want, you can actually do the fraction, I suppose. Backslash frac. Uh, oh, hold on backslash frac and if I hit a space notice I'm gonna to have to cut and paste this now 
because I did this as an afterthought, like a lot of things I do. And then over to a, of course, this whole thing is equal to x because that's an afterthought as well. Oh, here we go. x equals, there you go, x equals negative b plus or minus, whatever. Okay, so you got your quadratic formula. Um, division symbols, um, well, okay, multiplication symbols um, uh, I might want to talk about first. So, of course, we have a, b. Hold on. Let's go into the editor and do this. We have a, b, but that's equal to a backslash times b. You can do it that way, too. Or you can do it this way. Uh, a, and instead of the times, use the other one, the dot, right? And that's given as C dot, center dot, B. And so now you have three ways of showing multiplication in l using LaTeX commands. Uh, also, you have, um, let's see, there, uh, let's, here, let's move the mouse over, scroll that up a bit. Uh, what about division? So if we, oh, hold on, I keep forgetting, new equation. So frac a over b uh, div and then uh, let's go frac again frac c plus d over e plus f how I trans how I made the transition from the uh, from the numerator to the denom denominator I just hit the right arrow hitting the right arrow gets you down there uh, hitting the upper arrow or down arrow kind of has mixed results. Sometimes you get to the line below, actually. Uh, better to just use the right arrow. It's a little more a little more careful, a little more predictable. So um, you can see that um, the fonts resize themselves to fit the, uh, fit the situation. Um, LaTeX also tries to keep the line height roughly the same from line to line, although sometimes that can't be avoided. Like if I go if I go here and I do a new equation, let's do a summation. Uh, the summation will probably take a lot of a lot of space. I gotta find it though. Just hold on a second. Oh, here it is. It's in here. So let's do a summation. Oh, <laughs> better to um, better to do it down here. Let's try it again. Uh, hold on. New equation. Summation. So, uh, you know. Um, j equals 1 and then hit the right arrow that puts you in the top uh, j equals 1 to 10 and hit the right arrow again and now you're in front x plus well j plus 5 or x sub j plus 5 okay squared there you go so you can do that of course in calculus there's a number of things you just saw a limit formula. I believe you can do that using, I think this works, limit um, as x approaches. Oh, I can't use, I can't use for the right arrow, what you'd expect to work doesn't work. So you literally have to do backslash right arrow like that. Hit the space bar and there you go. So, and what about infinity? So I N F T Y after the backslash hit spacebar and there you are the limit as X approaches infinity of say um, frac X plus two over three X minus one. There's also some things that um, I know some teachers don't often go into like um, the symbol for for all is that, right? Uh, exists, for there exists. Oh, there we go. Uh, so for all, for all F, <laughs> for all Y, for all Y, there exists an X such that X, Y is a point on the graph or something. So, um, you know, there's there's things like that. There belongs an X in the set of reels. You can write whole paragraphs, whole essays, just using math symbols. Well, I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so now uh, what about what about uh, mapping notation? 
F colon. Colon is just a colon. It's just the normal colon on your keyboard. Nothing special. F colon. But the um, your uh, right arrow, remember, is uh, backslash right arrow and then space. And then um, maybe some function. Some function to which X is mapped. Okay? So there you go. Um, now, there's also another kind of thing that I go into. I know that um, uh, in calculus and vectors, there's a way of projecting, say, vector A onto vector B. And you want to find the projection of that vector, which is also a vector. Um, if you're projecting on vector B, then it must be parallel to vector B and a scalar multiple of vector B. How do you represent the projection notation? So I go with my favorite notation. My favorite notation is the one I found in an Addison Wesley textbook on, um, on uh, it's basically uh, geo, geo discrete. It was the old geo discrete course. And uh, that textbook had this notation in it. Um, let's just uh, stick an equation in. Um, so vec, V-E-C for vector. And then you hit the space and notice that puts you right underneath an arrow and you can place your you can place your variable for that vector right there. And now for um, for the um, projection part, a is projected on vector b. So the way the way I understand the notation, uh, it's down arrow, right, and then vector b. That to me is the simplest and nicest way I've seen uh, notation for projection vectors. There is no uh, agreed notation for projection of one vector onto another. Um, so that's that's kind of what they go with. They, that you kind of go with whatever you, whatever you think is okay. And usually, you, I guess the, the path of least resistance is to go what's in your textbook. The distance formula uh, with constant acceleration. Um, I believe uh, if you do that, I know it's S of T equals V naught T, oh no, so V naught T plus um, frac one half A T squared, right? And notice that uh, that's how we get the, notice how we got the subscript here. Where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? So notice how we got the subscript here. All, all I did was do this. I just did uh, V underscore and then the zero for whatever my subscript is. In this case, my subscript was a zero. But if we wanted to do V subscript anything else, like star or something, uh, you could do that too. I wonder. I wonder how that works now that I mention it. V subscript, oops, V subscript star. There you go. Uh, of course, you can do superscript star. Uh, all you do is the same thing, shift, uh, shift six for the exponent, and then you can do V star. Uh, you can also do probably V prime, so or even just do that. <laughs> oh, that's even better. I don't have to do a subscript. I just have to do just, there, anyway. Okay, um, so that is basically a good subs a subset, a good crash course in using uh, various uh, shortcuts in the uh, editor.